live streamed at allmetsports.com. Tonight, everything is on the line in the WCAC. This is the WCAC Tournament Championship. Tonight's game features the Good Council Falcons versus the Holy Cross Tartans. Hello, everybody. I'm Monica Moore, and we have a great matchup for you here tonight. Both of these two teams fighting for a lot. First of all, for Holy Cross, this is a rematch of last year's WCAC Tournament Final that they lost to Good Council 22-3. to So they would love to be able to get a little revenge for that. Meanwhile, for Good Council, they have won eight straight WCAC Tournament Championships. They would love to add a ninth straight trophy to their trophy case at the end of the game tonight. Both teams have lots of standout players. They're looking to have big games in this contest. And of course, both coaches looking for big games out of their goalkeepers. The head coach for the Good Council Falcons is, of course, Michael Haight. And the head coach for the Holy Cross Tartans is Jenna Reese. And now let's join the second member of our team down on the sidelines, Leah Reich. Hey, Monica, before the game, I talked to Falcons head coach Michael Haight, and he told me streaks are meant to be broken. He's counting on his girls to go out there and control the draw from start to finish. As for this Academy of the Holy Cross team, the pressure's on to break this Falcons winning streak. But head coach Jenna Reese says that her girls are not intimidated by the pressure. In fact, they're enjoying it. She told them to go out there, have fun, get control of the ground balls, and they have as good a chance as any to beat this Falcons team. Back up to you. Thanks, Leah, and we'll be checking in with Leah throughout tonight's broadcast. And we will take a quick break and listen in on the playing of the national anthem. Inspire us to respect each other with the common dignity that we share as your sons and daughters, now and forever. Amen. Starting lineups have been announced. Both teams getting ready to take the field for this WCAC Women's Championship matchup again between Good Council and Holy Cross. In order to get here tonight, Good Council squared off against Bishop O'Connell in the semifinals and they defeated them 18 to seven. So a big win for Good Council in that semifinal matchup. Now on the other side for Holy Cross, they squared off against Bishop Ireton. It was a close game. 
and it was a 9-8 win for Holy Cross that got them here tonight to face off against Good Counsel. Good Counsel coming into this contest, the number one seed in this tournament with a record of 13-6, again undefeated in the conference on the year for Holy Cross. They enter tonight's matchup with a record of 14-5 overall, 7-1 in the WCAC. Their only loss during the regular season, of course, to these good Council Falcons. Number two seed coming into the tournament and again, looking for a big win tonight. And as you heard Leah say, their coach Jenna Reese told us before the game that they're not at all intimidated. They're not intimidated by the streak that good counsel brings into this contest, nor by the reputation and the history of their own school. They've been looking to rebuild this program at Holy Cross, which of course experienced a lot of success in past years. They have a lot of players playing at the collegiate level right now, experiencing a lot of success. These young players look up to those players and are looking to carry on that tradition and would certainly love to finish up the season with a WCAC tournament championship. Lee, of course, also talked about how important the draw control circle is going to be tonight for both of these two teams. And the circle squaring off for Holy Cross is their standout, the senior Monica Lucas. No doubt we're going to be saying that name quite a bit tonight. She comes into this contest with 71 goals on the season and of course handling the draw control responsibilities as well. So an all around player, one of the best in the area and this WCAC tournament final is underway. Holy Cross winning the first draw control of the day as Mara Cassidy able to come up with the ground ball and Holy Cross will set up their offense they would love to get on the scoreboard early, which would give them a lot of confidence squaring off against this good council team that has a lot of offensive weapons. And right now, Holy Cross very patient. Now going towards the goal, first shot of the day goes long, but backed up by the Tartans. So it will remain Holy Cross ball. Nice pressure defense by Good Counsel. Good Counsel wearing the home whites. Good check. Holy Cross hangs on to possession. Holy Cross in the away black uniforms. And once again, Holy Cross showing some patience here. But as we saw, they did make a move towards the goal pretty early in their last possession. It was a good shot. And now an opportunity here coming up for Holy Cross. The Tartans play it conservative, not going towards the goal, but instead working to set up something in their settled offense. Good counsel doing a good job pushing them outside, not letting a lot of people make strong runs. Flag is up. And now a free position opportunity coming up for Shannon Gallagher, number six for the Holy Cross Tartans. 55 goals on the year for Shannon Gallagher. Gallagher with the shot, the first goal of the day. Scored for Holy Cross off the free position opportunity. And Jenna Reese could not have scripted it better to start off this contest. Her team winning the first draw control of the day. Getting some good movement on offense, drawing the foul, and then the free position opportunity is capitalized on by Shannon Gallagher. That is her 56th goal of the year. Gallagher will be playing her college lacrosse at Winthrop in South Carolina, but certainly we'd love to finish up this season, as we've said, with a WCAC tournament championship and a great way for her to start off the contest. And Holy Cross battling once again to come up with the ground ball. That's been a focus 
of the Tartans coming into this game. Jenna Reese talked about that before this contest, that that is one thing that her team did not do well last year in the WCAC Tournament Championship Final. And they have focused on that this year and have come up with some big ground balls early on. Nice ball movement, but the defense collapsing, easily saved by the good counsel goalkeeper, Meg Graham. It will remain good counsel possession. Holy Cross very aggressive on the ride though, trying to force the turnover. First offensive possession of the day for good counsel and very sloppy with the ball in the early goings. Still battling for the ground ball. Finally, good counsel coming up with it. A bit uncharacteristic for good counsel to start this game. Holy Cross has won the first two draw controls. And now another errant pass by good counsel. But now the Falcons on the attack. That shot almost goes into the goal. And then a save by the freshman goalkeeper for Holy Cross, Jackie Branthover. Branthover coming into this tournament with 91 saves on the year as a yellow card is awarded against the Good Council Falcons. This one is going to go against number 11, Haley Giraldi, who will leave the field. So another tough break for Good Council. Meanwhile, Holy Cross looking to Clear the ball up one to zero in the early goings of this WCAC tournament championship. Great job by the Tartans on the clear. A lot of credit to Monica Lucas, who's just doing a lot of the little things so far in the early goings of this contest. Great move to the goal by number five, Mara Cassidy. Mara Cassidy seeing a little daylight. Now good counsel with possession. For all your high school sports stories, game coverage, videos, photo galleries, and recruiting news, visit allmetsports.com. A product of the Washington Post, every school, every sport, all the time. Second offensive opportunity of the day for good counsel. Their first one in empty possession, but they got a good shot off. Actually a series of good shots off. Great check by the Holy Cross defense. Holy Cross has come to play tonight. And now a foul charged against Good Counsel. The momentum entirely with the Tartans at this point in the contest, up one to zero. They have won the draw control battle and their defense so far has come up with a couple of big plays, including one save by the freshman goalkeeper, Jackie Branthover. Another thing I think that Jenna Reese has to be very happy with so far, her team doing a great job on the clears, being able to set up their offense and getting some good movement. And now another opportunity, free position opportunity coming up here for Holy Cross. A second opportunity now for number 19, Gabrielle Costable. Seven goals on the year for Costable. And this time, Costable thinks better of it. Will back things out quickly. Double teamed, hands off. Smart play by Costable, wanting to save possession here for Holy Cross to get a good shot, and they do get a good shot on that play. And once again, it's number six, Shannon Gallagher. Second goal of the day for the senior, and now 57 on the year just like that. Holy Cross jumps out to a two to zero lead 
over good counsel in the early goings of this WCAC tournament final. 18 minutes, 39 seconds remaining in this first half, and it has been all Holy Cross so far. And let me tell you, the Holy Cross fans, I imagine, are not surprised by what they're seeing so far. The first time that these two teams met up this year, it was a close game in the first half, and then good counsel went on a 7-0 run in the second half to win that game. But this Holy Cross team can certainly compete with good counsel. And it will be good counsel possession. The Falcons still looking for their first goal of the day. Once again, aggressive pressure on the ride as a foul will be charged to Holy Cross. And our live coverage today brought to you by Sport Automotive Chevrolet and Honda. Be a sport fan too. Visit sportautomotive.com. Once again, the defense for Holy Cross, very aggressive, going to be charged with the foul, but they are really pressuring good counsel, trying not to let them get any good open looks at the freshman goalkeeper, Jackie Branthover. And Branthover has been very solid in goal all year. That shot by number 11, Haley Giraldi, backed up by the Falcons, and it will remain Falcons' possession. Good counsel working behind the net. Tori Cerny. Nice ball movement. Quick shot by the Falcons. And this one scored by Haley Giraldi. Second shot of this possession. And this time Giraldi gets her 28th goal of the year. A beautiful play. Nice ball movement by the Falcons. And now Good Council very quickly cuts into this deficit. Now just a two to one lead for the Holy Cross Tartan. 17 minutes remaining in this first half of the WCAC Tournament Final. Again, the first two goals of the day scored by Shannon Gallagher for Holy Cross. And now Holy Cross seeming to wake up Coming up with the draw control and possession, Quick quickly pushing the ball down the field, but an overpass. Good counsel able to hang on to possession. Nice job by the Falcons. They were trying to take advantage of an unsettled situation before the defense could set up. But regardless, an opportunity here for good counsel to score back-to-back -back goals. Nice ball movement, quick shot, beautiful save by Branthover. Looked like that shot was by Jennifer Morrissey, number 18. And that has to give Branthover a lot of confidence. That was a hard shot. She got her stick on it, got the save. Good check by good counsel, but Holy Cross hanging on to possession. And the foul will go against good counsel. The good counsel fans not pleased with the call. Fifteen minutes, 32 seconds remaining in this first half. Holy Cross getting off to a quick start, but then good counsel coming up with the past few draw controls. Nice defense by the Falcons. Closing off Monica Lucas. Of course, she's gonna draw a lot of attention today. The most prolific goal scorer in tonight's contest. Again, 71 goals on the year, absolutely astonishing what she has been able to achieve. Nice ball movement by the Tartans, quickly working the ball around, getting everyone involved. And again, this is Lucas up top, defended by Sammy Wilson. 
Lucas looking to make a move one on one. The shot by Lucas ricochets off the net. And Madison Hoover quickly on the clear coming down the field. And Hoover is fouled. A great job by Hoover, quickly moving down the field, not allowing the ride to present a lot of pressure. And now Good Council trying to take advantage. That shot looked like number six, Shea Cassidy. The defense had not had a chance to set up, and Cassidy coming up with a huge goal to tie things up two apiece, 14 minutes, seven seconds remaining in this first half. Lots of action so far. Both teams getting on the scoreboard in the early goings. Shannon Gallagher has been the standout on offense so far for Holy Cross, but you have to give a lot of credit to the freshman goalkeeper, Brant Hover. Now let's take a quick moment for a word from our sponsor. Sport Honda is just a very excellent dealership. The selection is really great. Uh, the prices are good. They treat you like family. I'm Sheba. I'm from Baltimore, and I am a sport fan. Sport Honda, be a sport fan too. And again, Holy Cross getting off to a good start, but good counsel coming roaring back in this contest. And of course, you did not expect for good counsel to stay quiet for long. After starting slow, good counsel with a goal by Haley Giraldi and a goal by Shea Cassidy have tied things up and the momentum has quickly swung over to the Falcons. All tied up two apiece, but I think right now head coach Jenna Reese trying to settle down her troops a bit. They came out of the gate so strong, but now finding themselves all tied up with the WCAC defending champions, the Good Council Falcons. But certainly her team doing a nice job doing one of the big goals that they had coming into tonight's contest, and that was to get to the ground balls. Also about now dead even at the draw control circle, so no advantage for either team right now with that statistical category. The goalkeeper Jackie Branthover has been tested early on again. Only a freshman, very impressive. Meanwhile, the goalkeeper for good counsel is Meg Graham, who will be playing for Virginia Tech, coming into this contest with 152 saves on the year. A very impressive season that Meg Graham is having so far. We will have a redraw. The ball did not go high enough on that draw control. And it is Giraldi in the draw control circle right now. For good counsel, already a goal on the day. Really having a standout game so far. For good counsel, and another redraw coming up. Or actually, it will be good counsel possession. Courtney Linter charged with the infraction. And Giraldi leading the charge down the field. And we will, as a save by Brand Hover, we will head back down to the sidelines for another report by Leah Reich. Pre-game. Holy Cross uh, head coach Jenna Reese told me that her, her key player of the game today was going to be Shannon Gall Gallagher. You really saw her perform out there, scoring the first two goals. And for Coach Haight, it was his goalie, Meg Graham, both of them getting lots of action. Coach Haight told me that their motto this year is outlast, outwork, outplay. And if things keep going the way they're going, it looks like that outlast component of the motto is going to be coming really into play here today for both teams. Back up to you. Thanks, Leo. So we will see if good counsel can outlast Holy Cross, or if Holy Cross will finally be able to knock off the Falcons. Meanwhile, the Falcons with possession, but that was a beautiful save right before we went down for the report with Leah by the goalkeeper, Brant Hover. She got her foot or her leg on it. At least three big saves in this contest so far for Brant Hover. 
Nice idea, good counsel, looking for Caroline Peters. But Holy Cross again, getting to the ground ball. I think that Jenna Reese has to be very happy with that, but not happy about the turnover. As good counsel will regain possession. Looked like Holy Cross stepped out of bounds. And an easy lane to the goal for good counsel, but then not able to connect in front of the goal. Good counsel has been looking to do that often. I give them a lot of credit because they've been going for high shooting percentage goals, trying to go right in front of the mouth of the goal, but a lot of times they have not been able to connect with their passing. And it will be Holy Cross possession. Hannah Suttle looking for the long clearing pass, nicely caught by Courtney Linter. Linter fouled by Cameron Kearns. And if you would like to purchase a copy of this broadcast or any of the broadcasts in the Metro Lack series, go to www.synthesismp.com as this one continues to get more and more exciting. Another goal scored by Holy Cross, number 12, Monica Lucas, scoring her 72nd goal of the year once again putting Holy Cross on top. Just a beautiful goal by Lucas. Shannon Spalacy heading to the draw control circle. Jenna Reese really mixing it up in the circle, giving lots of players different opportunities. No doubt trying to find something that works consistently as she realizes that possession in this game is going to be huge. Her team winning another draw control. Again, Holy Cross really doing a great job at the circle. Caroline McCormick coming up with the loose ball. Push called and it will be good counsel. Ball 11 minutes, nine seconds remaining in this first half. Holy Cross up by one. Courtesy of that last goal by the senior standout, Monica Lucas. And as Leah said, Coach Reese said before the game that she was really looking for a good game out of Gallagher, but also Lucas as well. Her seniors, she said she really wanted all of her seniors to have great games tonight. And once again, Holy Cross looking to set something up from the middle. Quick shot saved by Meg Graham. That shot by number 20, Kristen Bingston. And an errant pass, Bingston racing to save it, cannot get there in time. And so good counsel will turn the ball over. Or, sorry, Holy Cross will turn the ball over. Good counsel quickly working down the field and again, Sloppy with the passing are the Falcons turning the ball right back over, returning the favor. And I think right now Michael Haight cannot be happy with how sloppy his team has been with the passing. A lot of unforced errors by good counsel, particularly in the early goings. Fans looking for the charge call, but instead it's going to go against good counsel. Officials talking things over. Perhaps going to be getting a throw here. We will be getting a throw off that last possession. Good counsel battling for it, but instead Holy Cross is Monica Lucas coming up with possession. Well defended was Lucas and perhaps some miscommunication there. Expecting, not sure if that was a shot or intended to be a pass, but regardless, she will turn the ball right back over. So sloppy play back and forth 
in the past few seconds here, but it will be Good Counsel's possession. Graham looking to start the clear. Again, Good Counsel struggled a bit with their clearing game. Some unforced errors by the Falcons, and now a lot of pressure being applied to Megan Griffin. This time, however, clearing no problem for Good Counsel as Caroline Peters will set up their settled offense. Paige Graham up top trying to get a step on her defender, draws the double team. And now Good Counsel showing some patience. Again, their strategy, they have been looking for the quick pass around the mouth of the goal. Nice defensive play by Kristen Gaines. Come on, Brandon. Once again, an errant pass. Good counsel momentarily hanging on to it, but instead, Hannah Suttle coming up with it for Holy Cross. Nice catch. And the Holy Cross fans cannot believe the call, but regardless, the other way comes Good Counsel and Caroline Peters, number two. So back and forth lacrosse, we have had a lot of turnovers in this first half of the WCAC Tournament Championship Final. This is Giraldi, already a goal on the day. That shot just over the back of the net. And now an opportunity here coming up for Haley Giraldi on the free position opportunity. Not a lot of defenders in her way essentially almost one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, but goes behind the net looking for number nine, Paige Graham. So a conservative play by Good Counsel, looking to tie things up. And now the officials calling a lot of fouls here as Graham with the free position opportunity, Paige Graham. 15 goals on the year. Nice save by Branthover. And then a heads up play by Madison Hoover coming up with the ground ball. Hoover really has been very active doing a lot of the little things in the early goings of this contest for Good Counsel. And once again, Good Counsel looking for the cutters across the front of the goal. Peters trying to sneak inside. Nicely backed up by the Falcons. It will remain Falcons possession. Five minutes, 54 seconds remaining in this first half. Compared to last year's contest, a bit of a low scoring affair so far. Again, the final score last year's game was 22 to three. Good counsel really had a huge offensive showing, but today a fairly even matchup so far by these two teams. And Good Counsel looking to tie things up before halftime. Giraldi going behind the net. And once again, nice defense by the Holy Cross defenders. They've really done a nice job trying to stop the cutters and prevent any openings from behind the goal. lengthy possession here for good counsel they've had a couple of good opportunities some free position shots the holy cross coming up with possession a little confusion there but the officials finally call it good counsel ball so good counsel has had possession for the past few minutes here looking to tie things up but so far, this Holy Cross defense has been very impressive in this first half. Jenna Reese has to be really happy so far with how well 
This defense has worked together and Brandhover continuing to be a brick wall back in the goal. Again, only a freshman. They are very excited about her. The two goalkeepers, in fact, for Holy Cross, one a freshman, one a sophomore. As Jenna Reese has been looking to rebuild this program, they certainly have to be excited about having Branthover back for a couple more years. Spell Lacey runs right into the good council defense, turning the ball over. And so this defense for Holy Cross has to be getting a little tired. They have been on defense for quite some time. As Graham once again works behind the goal. Foul charged against Good Council will give the ball back to Holy Cross. Three minutes, 24 seconds remaining in this first half. Again, Holy Cross up by one. Looking to do what no one in the WCAC has been able to do in 90 tries, which is to knock off these Good Council Falcons. Nice strong move to the goal, but well defended. And then a foul will be called. Looks like it will go against Kaylee Gunn. And now an opportunity coming up here for Holy Cross. Two minutes, 38 seconds remaining as Monica Lucas looks for her second of the day. Again, 72 goals on the year for Monica Lucas. Smart play by Lucas looking for Gallagher, but Gallagher's shot goes long. Again, very unselfish play. Regardless, Holy Cross hangs on to possession. Two minutes, 13 seconds remaining in this first half. Holy Cross going to be patient here with their one goal lead. Nice ball movement by the Tartans, but ball knocked loose. Really one of the stories of this contest so far has been the defensive play of both of these two teams. And then the other story has been the turnovers. Lots of turnovers by both of these two teams, many unforced. As Good Council will regain possession with one minute, 30 seconds remaining in this first half, looking to tie things up before halftime. Good Council charged with the, uh, sorry, Holy Cross charged with the foul. Caroline McCormick heading off the field and now in the penalty box. So a good opportunity here coming up for good counsel. Plenty of time remaining in this first half, one minute, 16 seconds. So good counsel, no need to hurry things. Looking for Peter's quick shot by Peters. Battle for the ground ball, and again, Holy Cross coming up with it. Do not have the specific statistics, but certainly Holy Cross has been impressive getting to the ground balls in this first half. Again, they have to be very happy about that. But the turnovers for both teams continuing to add up. Peters will hand off. And Holy Cross's defense continues to be absolutely outstanding, led by Branthover, but her back line 
has been so good, particularly in unsettled situations. Thunderbird on the doorstep, nine seconds remaining in this first half, and Gallagher, the recipient of a beautiful pass. The hat trick for Shannon Gallagher in this first half. Now 60 goals on the year for Shannon Gallagher, but that was really a team goal. Holy Cross taking advantage, pushing the ball down the field, not giving the good council defense time to set up. There was very little that Meg Graham could do right there, just a one-on-one -on -one between Gallagher and Graham, and Gallagher is having an amazing contest so far in this WCAC tournament final. Not a lot of time remaining in this first half, and Holy Cross continuing to do good work at the draw circle as time expires in the first half. At halftime, our score is Holy Cross 4, good counsel 2. And the first half could not have gone much better for head coach Jenna Reese and her Holy Cross Tartans. She has to be very happy with how they played on defense in particular, led by Jackie Branthover in the goal. Branthover came up with a number of very impressive, goal, uh, impressive saves, and her back line did such a good job preventing a lot of those close range looks, cutting off the cutters and making sure that the goalkeeper was well protected. And then of course I talked a lot about the fact that Holy Cross did a great job getting to a lot of the ground balls and winning a lot of the draw controls. So a lot of those fundamental things that coaches talk about so much, Jenna Reese's club did such a good job of in the first half. Now the one thing that I imagine she is definitely talking to her team about at halftime is all the turnovers because both good counsel and holy cross struggled a lot with the turnovers a lot of unforced errors in the first half but overall i think that jenna reese has to be very happy with how things stand right now meanwhile for head coach michael Haight, for his team again the turnovers have been killing good counsel particularly on the clearing game it seems like at times they're trying to do too much trying to push the ball down the field, trying to get some unsettled situations. Since 1997, Madlax is lacrosse for DC, Maryland, and Virginia families. Check out madlax.com to learn about tryouts for the DC area's most competitive summer all-stars program and summer camps for boys and girls ages seven through 18. Visit one of three area retail stores and mention Metro Lax Series to receive a 15% discount. Visit madlax.com and as always, play with passion. And now let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor. If you need a new car, you absolutely have to come to Sport. They made me feel like I was part of their Sport family. They have the biggest selection, great prices, and everybody's nice. I'm Annalisa from Hyattsville, and I'm a Sport fan. Sport Chevrolet, be a Sport fan too.
I'm here with the Washington Post's Eric Detweiler. He's going to talk with us a little bit about the upcoming game we're about to see between Gonzaga and DeMatha. Eric, what are you looking most forward to seeing today? Well, it should be a great game. Uh, this one is all about Gonzaga trying to finish out what's a historic season for them. You know, they went undefeated against all the area teams so far this year. Their only loss was to McDonough up in Baltimore early in the season. They got through all of their IAC games, which is always a, a point of pride for them. Won each of the, all four of them this year. And, uh, you know, it, it's just a matter of if DeMatha's young kids, they got a lot of really skilled young attackmen, exciting offensive players, but I don't know if they're ready for prime time. We'll see today because DeMatha had, uh, Gonzaga rather has as good of a defense as we have in anywhere in this area. So I'm excited to watch uh, that matchup, and uh, it's always exciting. Connor Reed is one of the for uh, Gonzaga is one of the most exciting players in the area. So you're going to want to watch, keep your eyes on him all night. So uh, Dematha, they're all their starting uh, players are sophomores. So I hear. Is there anyone that we should be looking for to stand out? Yeah, I saw them the other day against uh, St. Mary's Riken in their uh, semifinal, and uh, they have a guy named Steve Partlow um, who plays a lot, a lot uh, older than he is. You know, I was talking to him after the game, and he said, "You know, I made it to the uh, a league final in hockey season. We came up short. He's like, I really want to get this one this year. Uh, you know, close out my year right." So that's you know bold words for a young kid who's still got some time to earn that league title, but he wants it right now. So we'll see how that works out for him. Is there anything in particular that we should be looking? Who who's going to who's going to come out and play the hardest? You think today? Who wants it more? I guess. Well, Gonzaga's certainly been here before, so uh, we'll we'll see if the, you know Dematha has a little bit of nerves. Dematha was just here two years ago, so you know you'd think that they would be used to it. They've been here a lot over the years, but a lot of like you said, the young kids who haven't been on this stage before in their semifinal game, they came out really fast and then kind of got. Uh, you know, caught up in the game a little bit and just kind of were holding on at the end. If they have that kind of performance today, they're going to be in trouble. They're going to need to start fast and sustain it, which is something that they didn't do last time out. So it kind of seems like these young guys, even though they are young, they're playing much older than they really are. and Their pressure shouldn't really get to them. Yeah, if they come out and play like they did in the first half against St. Mary's Riken for a whole game here on a big stage, it's going to be a fun one. If not, you know, it's uh, you know should be pretty easy for Gonzaga to cruise to a third straight uh, tournament title, which is you know something they haven't done before. So they're interested in getting that history and taking care of business. Thank you, Eric, and stay tuned for the Gonzaga Dematha game here live streaming at 7 p.m. We'll be here for the whole thing. Back up to you guys. And of course, one player that will be heavily featured in that contest is Gonzaga standout Connor Reed. Let's take a look at a package about the Gonzaga standout. Uh, I like that. Uh, uh, just going as hard as I can and then uh, trying to look to create for the other players. Uh, Connor, he's just a real athletic midi, loves to create for everybody else. He's uh, He's really fun to work off the ball with because he always finds you. He's really good at looking. He's got incredible vision. Athleticism. He, uh, he gets up and down the field uh, as fast as anyone I've coached in, in 12 years here at the school. Um, he's just uh, shifty, quick, uh, tough to stay with, and, and can get open whenever he wants. I think the best part about his playing style is he sort of makes everybody better. Uh, Connor's probably the most athletic kid I've seen take the, uh, the cross field. He's a um, really unselfish player, doesn't care about anyone but the team, and uh, you know, he just goes out there and gives it 100% every game. Um, it was pretty cool. Um, I played under for the Washington D.C. team two years ago, and uh, it was nice to play with a lot of older kids and the best competition around, and uh, just to get better, play with some good players. Um, Everything, the uh, location, coaching staff is great, um, the history behind it, and it's just a great team and a great program, and I look forward to playing next year. When we went into the locker room, uh, just seeing all the greats that played there before and to think maybe I could play there one day, that really uh, influenced my decision. I think it's a great fit. When you got an athlete like that, um, you know, what, what program and, and, and what school would not want uh, a player like him, I think he could go to pretty much any place uh, and, and play and, and hopefully you know, start to play sooner than later because of that athleticism. And what makes him such a good, a good player is that he's smart. The kid has over a 4.0 GPA here at school. Um, so we always teach our kids to play with energy, to play with fire, but to play smart. 
and Connor's doing that at all times. Um, when I took the visit, the players, it was a whole family, just like here at Gonzaga, and uh, they welcomed me in as soon as I came, and I had a really good time. So. That he leads by example. Um, you know, he won't like get in the face, yell at anyone, but you know, he'll give positive encouragement to whoever, and just lead by example by going 100 percent at anything he does. You know, he made he made the team as a freshman, which is hard to do, uh, which is hard to do here, and we got him on the field right away. Uh, he kind of used his athleticism earlier on, and now he's kind of changed his game where um, not only is he shooting more, which was something we begged him to do for years, um, but he is continuing to make people better, uh, and, and he's improved on his defensive end. He's Underway in this WCAC Tournament Championship Final. Again, I'm Monica Moore, Leah Reich down on the sidelines, and Holy Cross looking to pick up right where they left off in the first half, still looking for Shannon Gallagher. Perhaps a bit too unselfish on that play as good counsel comes up with it. But let's take a look at some first half statistics. I talked a lot about the goalkeeper for Holy Cross, Grant Hover. She had six saves in the first half. An impressive showing Meg Graham, the goalkeeper for good counsel with three saves. Draw controls were about dead even in the first half. Holy Cross had three. Good counsel had four. I talked a lot about the ground balls, and actually, good counsel had the margin there, 11 to 7, but some big, important ground balls at the right time for Holy Cross as Peters looking for the extra pass and the score. Beautiful teamwork by good counsel. That last goal scored by Tori Cerny but courtesy of the pass by Caroline Peters. Cerny right on the doorstep. And now our score four to three. Holy Cross's lead has been cut to one. 23 minutes, 44 seconds remaining in this second half. And a great sign for the good counsel faithful as they come out of halftime and score a quick goal not even two minutes into this second half of the WCAC Tournament Final. Battle for the loose ball off the draw control. And Holy Cross coming up with it. Monica Lucas heading downfield with a little daylight. Lucas. Looking to score, goes off the pipe. Holy Cross still with possession. And now let's head down to the sidelines for an update from Leah Reich. Spoke with Coach Reese quickly there at halftime, and she is beside herself with excitement. And that excitement is actually carrying over. It seems like Holy Cross brought their whole school out today to cheer on the team. The excitement is carrying from the stands onto the sideline. And if they can keep this momentum and this excitement up, they might have a really good shot at taking this one home today. Back up to you, Monica. Thanks, Leah. Well, certainly Jenna Reese had a lot to be happy about in that first half. And now her team with a free position opportunity, Shannon Spalacy not at the best hash mark so she will hand off to Lucas. Now an opportunity coming up for Monica Lucas. Lucas of course already a goal scorer in this contest looks to bounce it in but instead it goes long. But Leah talking about how happy Jenna Reich was, or sorry, Jenna Reese was with her team in the first half. And Gallagher trying to sneak inside. That one going over the top of the net. Again, the one thing for both of these two teams, they were dead even with the turnovers. Eight apiece. So 16 combined turnovers between these two squads in the first half. Neither coach can be happy with that, but it's been a bit of a wash. As that one goes in to the side of the net. And now one of the good council players, it's number 18, Jennifer Morrissey, hit in the face. You see Morrissey trying to shake it off. And again, for all your high school sports stories, game coverage, videos, photo galleries, and recruiting news, visit allmetsports.com, a product of the Washington Post, every school every sport, all the time. 
So Morrissey will be leading the clear here for good counsel. She'll hand off to number 23, Allie Fleshing. And good counsel getting everyone involved is now Meg Graham. The goalkeeper pressure, good job on the ride by Holy Cross, but now Graham in the goal circle. 21 minutes, 19 seconds remaining in this WCAC tournament final and the turnovers continuing as Spalacy takes a hard hit to the ground. Spalacy fouled. And right now, good counsel, their own worst enemy. As Megan Griffin will have to leave the field. And our live coverage today brought to you by Sport Automotive Chevrolet and Honda. Be a sport fan too, visit sportautomotive.com. Opportunity here coming up for the Tartans up by one. And as Leah said, they could not be happier with the way that things have gone so far in this contest. Spalacy looking to get a step, working through a number of defenders, but not able to get the shot off. She'll hand off. Nice team defense by good counsel. But a free position opportunity here coming up for the Tartans. Up by one, looking to extend that lead even more. And a good opportunity, a good hash mark here for Holy Cross. And that shot rattles into the net. And just like that, Holy Cross once again extends their lead. Monica Lucas. Again, coming up with the big play, and it has been the seniors today for Jenna Reese in this contest that have really stepped up their game. Again, Jenna Reese told us that before this game got started, that she was looking for Monica Lucas and Shannon Gallagher to have big days, and that has been exactly what has happened for the Holy Cross Tartans and why they are up by two. A big draw control here. Good counsel would love to win possession and get the momentum back in this contest. Great job in the circle by the Falcons. Number six, Shea Cassidy. And a hard hit as we will have a free position opportunity coming up for good counsel. Shea Cassidy really doing a great job on that possession, winning the draw control, and then an individual effort by Cassidy. And again, if you would like to purchase a copy of this broadcast, go to www synthesismp.com you can get copies of any of the broadcasts in the Metro Lac series we have had a lot of phenomenal games featuring some of the best teams in the Washington DC metro area it's another throw coming up the second one that we've had in today's contest but in the Metro Lac series had some of the best teams from around the area. Landon, Georgetown Prep, Gonzaga and Bullis, one of the first games of the season. And of course, in the late game tonight, we will have Gonzaga versus DeMatha, which Leah helped preview at halftime. People very excited about that contest as Gonzaga looks for their third straight WCAC championship. Of course, that in some ways, when you look at this contest and you see here that good counsel looking for their ninth straight, just sheer dominance that good counsel has had in the WCAC over the past few years. But right now, finding themselves 
in a situation that they are not familiar with in the WCAC. In fact, all of their conference games this year, they have won by four or more goals. So now finding themselves down by two, it's a bit of unfamiliar territory. And almost another, and it is another turnover as Good Counsel comes up with it. Morrissey, left side, as the turnover woes for both of these two teams continue. Good counsel once again looking to feed in front of the net, looking for Caroline Peters' race for possession. Nice individual effort by both teams trying to win possession. It will be good counsel ball courtesy of Jennifer Morrissey's effort. And Morrissey quickly cut off. And an opportunity coming up now for Jennifer Morrissey. That foul charge to Shannon Spalacy. Again, a tough hash mark here, not a great angle. So Morrissey trying to switch around and get a better angle. But another big save by the freshman, Jackie Branthover. Unlucky there for Holy Cross. They will turn the ball over once again, flag up. Now last play, Nicole Lanta just lost her footing. Turning the ball over. And now a free position opportunity coming up here. Cassidy with the shot, the save by Branthover. She has had two big saves in the past minute for Holy Cross. 17 minutes, 23 seconds remaining in this contest. Holy Cross finding themselves up by two, courtesy of big time play by Gallagher and Lucas, not to mention their freshman goalkeeper who has been standing strong. But it has been the turnovers that have continued to play both of these two teams. This time Holy Cross turning the ball over again giving yet another possession to Good Counsel, looking to cut into this deficit and another foul. An opportunity coming up here for Haley Giraldi, already a goal in this contest for Giraldi. She scored the first of the day for Good Counsel, looking for her second, another save by Branthover. She has been sensational absolutely not intimidated in the slightest by this good council team. I am so impressed with Jack Jackie Branthover. And of course, again, coming up next, we will have the boys final in this WCAC tournament, Gonzaga and DeMatha will be squaring off again. Gonzaga looking for their third straight WCAC championship at DeMatha, a lacrosse powerhouse in their own right, looking to break the streak. Gonzaga, 19-1 on the year. They have not been defeated by any team in the WCAC or the IAC. They're 4-0 against IAC opponents as Shea Cassidy trying to work through several defenders and set something up. 15 minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Morrissey with the shot. And a free position opportunity coming up for Jennifer Morrissey at the center hash mark. There are no defenders between Morrissey and Branthover. So a good opportunity here. And Branthover somehow still comes up with the save. What a game Branthover has had in this contest. And now Branthover taking her time, not rushing things on the clear. Smart play by Branthover. And her team just continuing to struggle on the clears. Now Holy Cross turning the ball over yet again. 
Brando has to be a little frustrated at this point. But good counsel will return the favor. The turnovers, again, has been one of the biggest stories in this contest. But really, neither team hurt by the turnovers in that both teams have struggled. So they were dead even with that statistic at halftime. Eight apiece and seems pretty much the same in the second half, even though they do not have the specific statistics. Logan Smet. Pushed out of bounds, but will retain possession for Holy Cross. 13 minutes, 50 seconds remaining in this WCAC tournament final. Holy Cross trying to knock off the powerhouse. Good counsel, Falcons. Again, our live coverage today brought to you by Sport Automotive, Chevrolet, and Honda. Be a sport fan too. Visit sportautomotive.com. And an opportunity coming up here for Shannon Spalacy. Eight goals on the year for the junior. Has been very active in today's contest. We've mentioned her name several times. And now she is on the center hash. And Spalacy with the goal. And in this exact same situation that Jennifer Morrissey had on the other end of the field. No defenders between Spalacy and the goalkeeper, Meg Graham. But Shannon Spalacy able to find the back of the net. And with that, Holy Cross extending their lead 6-3 to three over the Good Council Falcons. Their fans, they have brought a huge cheering section here today to spur them on timeout on the field. And Jenna Reese, again, Leah talked about the fact at halftime she was so happy, she was so excited, and that excitement was carrying over to her team, and you're seeing that. And I imagine that the mood in Jenna Reese's huddle right now is that exact same excitement because her team has come out today and played a very solid game. Of course, there is plenty of time remaining in this WCAC Tournament Championship Final. 13 minutes, 12 seconds remaining on the clock and three goals is not a huge lead in lacrosse and we've seen how quickly good counsel can put goals up on the scoreboard but right now Jenna Reese has to be very happy with how dynamic her team has been and particularly her freshman goalkeeper let's take another minute to have a word from our sponsor if you need a new car, you absolutely have to come to Sport. They made me feel like I was part of their Sport family. They have the biggest selection, great prices, and everybody's nice. I'm Annalisa from Hyattsville, and I'm a Sport fan. Sport Chevrolet, be a Sport fan too. And let's head down to the sidelines for another update from Leah Reich. Emotions getting really high down here on the field. Players from both teams are trying to rally one another up. They're getting loud. And, you know, it's getting rough out there. So I'm really surprised we haven't seen any serious injuries because these girls are not afraid to get physical with one another. If we continue to see this type of play, uh, I really just hope no one gets hurt because these girls are really going at it. And they are, they are pumped up for one another. They are ready to go. So it's really going to be about who wants it more here in the last few minutes. Thanks, Leah. Well, certainly, again, a lot on the line tonight. Not just the WCAC Tournament Championship title and trophy, but a lot of pride as well as good counsel. Again, we've talked so much about that streak, and Leah mentioned the fact that Michael Haight said before the game that streaks, you know, streaks are meant to be broken. Um, a lot of people want to break those streaks. People really get up for those games where they can do that. And so his team, well aware of the fact they have that bullseye on their back every single time they take the field. So he's certainly aware also of what great competitors this Holy Cross team is. But good counsel not letting up at all. Winning the draw control again. Madison Hoover coming up with another big play for the Good Council Falcons. And now Good Council, plenty of time remaining as they look to create and instead cause a turnover. Again, Good Council sticking with what they've been trying to do on offense. They're trying to have someone inverted behind the goal, feed a player 
around the center of the goal, trying to get a close range shot on Branthover. They know how good of a goalkeeper she is. Is Caroline Peters able to come back up with it for good counsel? So they're trying to get a high percentage shot, but the defense for Holy Cross has done a great job breaking up those passes, not letting good counsel really achieve what they've been trying to do on offense in this settled offense, as you see number seven, Tori Cerny trying to make something happen. Cerny with a goal on the day as well. And an opportunity coming up here for Shea Cassidy, the free position opportunity. A good angle here for Cassidy. She's going to take it as it hits the pipe. Unlucky for Shea Cassidy, but good counsel will hang on to possession. Cameron Kearns coming up with the ground ball off the shot by Cassidy. The pipe, the goalkeeper's best friend. Looking for Hoover. That was a great cut by Madison Hoover, well fed by Paige Graham from behind the net, but the shot just goes long. And again, good counsel sticking with this strategy. Graham inverted behind the net, looking for those players cutting inside. Now Cerny also behind the net as Graham leaves that position. She was looking for Peters that time. Good counsel will hang on to possession. Kearns will hand off. And now Cassidy double teamed. Shot by Cassidy, backed up by the Falcons. And another free position opportunity now coming up for Shea Cassidy in its exact same hash mark that Cassidy was at on that earlier free position look. This time defenders come. And the shot goes high, but again backed up by good counsel. So two free position opportunities for good counsel, but Shea Cassidy not able to convert. Now Hoover with the shot saved by Brant Hoover. Brant Hoover has been sensational. I keep mentioning the freshman but she has truly been spectacular in this tournament final. Holy Cross now with possession, fouled, was Spalacy. Under 10 minutes remaining in this contest, nine minutes, 50 seconds on the game clock. Holy Cross with a six to three lead, but again, the Tartans realize that against good counsel, that is not enough of a lead to feel confident right now, but Spalacy Handing off to Gallagher. Gallagher with the boot! What a game Shannon Gallagher has had. Four goals in this contest by the senior standout. But again, credit Spalacy. Unselfish play by Spalacy. Shannon Gallagher has been spectacular. Four goals now for Gallagher, two for Lucas, and one for Shannon Spalacy, and that is how Holy Cross has scored seven goals in this contest. The three for good counsel scored by Haley Giraldi, Shea Cassidy, and Tori Cerny. But good counsel, Shea Cassidy coming up with the draw control, a much needed possession, and Cassidy fouled. Cassidy does such a good job on those draw controls, winning possession and pushing downfield as quickly as possible, trying to create something on an unsettled situation. I have been really impressed with how aggressive Shea Cassidy has been in this contest. She's been a bit unlucky with the free position opportunities, but she is a warrior out there for good counsel. And you heard Leah talking about it. These two teams, both of them, every single athlete out on the field, leaving everything out there. They realize this is the biggest game of the season. There's no reason to hold back now. Nine minutes, 17 seconds on the game clock. And look at Brant Hover. She was being aggressive and it, goes to her detriment as she comes out of the goal to defend the pass. And good counsel able to score the goal. 
the empty net vacated by Jackie Branthover. And that goal scored by number nine, Paige Graham. Again, Branthover leaving the goal, leaving it wide open for Paige Graham. Graham only a sophomore. That is her 16th goal of the year. Of course, she has a lot of assists on the year as well. We've seen her behind the goal working as the feeder for this good council team. So once again, the lead for Holy Cross is at three. Our score seven to four, nine minutes, 13 seconds remaining in this tournament final. Holy Cross momentarily coming up with possession, but good counsel not giving up on the play. And you continue to see the aggressive play out on the field that Leah talked about for both of these two teams. Everything is contested exactly what you would expect in the WCAC tournament final. And another quick shot by Holy Cross finds the back of the net. Unbelievable. Number 17, Logan Smith, her 13th of the year. You see just how quickly in lacrosse you can score a goal because right after Paige Graham cut this deficit to three, Logan Smith with the answer and again credit Holy, uh, Holy Cross they won the draw control not intimidated at all every single time good counsel has tried to make a run in this contest and has tried to steal the momentum away from the Tartans the Tartans have gotten it back Monica Lucas coming up with a huge draw control for Holy Cross and now Holy Cross with possession. The time is on their side. They can try to expend a little clock here if they choose Gallagher. Pressured behind the net will hand off to Lucas. And a four goal lead, eight minutes, seven seconds remaining in this contest. Lucas up top trying to work through defenders. And Monica Lucas has been spectacular today, as has her teammate Shannon Gallagher, who has four goals on the day. Free position opportunity for Lucas. Not a good angle here for Lucas. So we'll see what she opts to do from this hash mark, whether she looks to try to create a better angle for herself, or whether she will hand off to a teammate. And she does very wisely, does Monica Lucas. And again, right now, perhaps, Holy Cross just looking to run some time off this clock. A four-goal lead. But you see here, good counsel pressuring. They realize that they have to win possession back. They do not want to let Holy Cross run a lot of time off this clock uncontested as Spalacy working for Holy Cross will hand off to Gallagher. Nice ball movement by Holy Cross trying to evade the defenders here. And so what Holy Cross wants to do is have good crisp passing as the Tartans are fouled. And what they cannot afford to do is have more costly turnovers like we saw throughout a lot of this contest. Another free position opportunity here for Monica Lucas. And this time Lucas will take the shot and Monica Lucas finds her third shot of the day, scoring a goal. Monica Lucas and Shannon Gallagher, four for Gallagher, three for Lucas. Again, our live coverage today brought to you by Sport Automotive Chevrolet and Honda. Be a sport fan too, visit sportautomotive.com. And the Holy Cross Tartans are starting to feel it. They are six minutes and 23 seconds away from potentially winning a WCAC tournament championship against a good council team that has won eight in a row. 
But again, this good counsel team is too good for you to count them out. But right now, Jenna Reese's team is doing everything right on the backs of their senior standouts. Monica Lucas, who is headed to play her college lacrosse at Denver, was first team WCAC last year, which I'm sure comes as no surprise to anyone in this stadium. And then of course, Shannon Gallagher, who will be heading to play her college lacrosse at Winthrop, also first team WCAC last year. As the Gonzaga Eagles have arrived who will be playing in the boys' final, but still plenty of time remaining in this girls' final. Six minutes, 12 seconds on the clock. Holy Cross continuing to fight for every single possession. Gallagher is fouled. Morrissey can't believe it, but the call goes against Morrissey. And actually the foul she fouled Spalacy. Now Gallagher with possession. And once again, Holy Cross content to let some time run off this clock. They executed their last possession to perfection. They took a lot of time off the clock and then got a free position opportunity for Monica Lucas, who scored which is exactly what you want to do when you are in a late game situation. You have the lead. If you take a shot, you want it to be an extremely high percentage shot, but you would love to let as many seconds click off the clock as possible. Holy Cross up by five, five minutes, five seconds remaining in this contest. As you see Caroline Peters trying to pressure Logan Smet. Smet fouled. Smet a goal on the day. Now a bit of keep away here by Holy Cross, just looking to work the ball around on the outside. The Tartans fouled once again. And right now, Jenna Reese's team is doing such a nice job of possessing the ball, having good, crisp passing. not allowing this good council team a lot of good opportunities to force turnovers, really working to perfection. And teams practice this a lot, these late game situations where you are just trying to possess the ball, not necessarily trying to score unless you get that right opportunity. And right now, Holy Cross being very impressive, not giving the defense a lot of opportunities to check the ball and stretching out this good council defense. Good council thought they might have finally come up with a check, but instead charged with the foul. And so with three minutes, 21 seconds on the clock, a comfortable now five goal lead for Holy Cross. I mean, certainly good counsel could score five goals in this contest, but they're going to have to get possession back from Holy Cross. And right now, Holy Cross has possessed the ball for the past few minutes. They have been phenomenal in their settled offense, just working the ball around, getting everyone involved in what a team effort. We've talked so much today about Gallagher and about Lucas and of course Branthover, but really an entire team effort today by Holy Cross. I think Jenna Reese has to be so happy with what her team has done in this contest so far. Finally, Spalacy will be fouled, or actually Lucas is fouled. Now two minutes, 20 seconds left on this clock and the Holy Cross faithful starting to taste it. And really all that good counsel can do right now is foul. 
They have been desperately trying to force a turnover and again credit this Holy Cross team because they have struggled today with the turnovers. But when it has mattered most, they have been able to hang on and possess the ball. Great job there by Mara Cassidy. Knocked to the ground, hanging on to possession. The clock now stopped with one minute, 51 seconds remaining on it. Cassidy will hand off. And now essentially Holy Cross just trying to possess the ball and to do what a lot of people probably thought was unlikely here today, which is to knock off this good council team that has won 90 straight WCAC conference contest. No one has been able to defeat them in 90 games. Eight straight WCAC tournament championships. The clear underdog coming into tonight's contest was Holy Cross as they were devastated last year, 22 to three by this good council team. But tonight it has been an entirely different story courtesy of players like this one right here, Shannon Gallagher, the senior, looking to leave her mark on this rivalry before graduation. Again, Jenna Reese told us before the game that her team has been looking to rebuild that legacy that Holy Cross has had in past years. And I think this is going to be a huge start to rebuilding that legacy. Of course, they will lose Gallagher and Lucas to graduation, but they have a bright defensive future in particular with Jackie Branthover. Now one minute, 10 seconds left in regulation. A yellow card awarded against Caroline Peters, the Vanderbilt commit. And Holy Cross has possessed the ball for at least the past six or seven minutes, it seems. They have been dominating in this settled offensive set, possessing the ball, not allowing good counsel to force a turnover. They have really earned what now is likely to be their victory today, up by five with only 70 seconds remaining in this contest. Their fans very excited right now in the crowd cheering on this Holy Cross team that has had a phenomenal season, but this will certainly be the capstone for Jenna Reese's club as we get back underway and the Tartans continuing to possess Cassidy. Ball momentarily knocked loose. Nice defense by Shea Cassidy as she finally is able to take possession away from good counsel. And look at the defensive play by Holy Cross not giving up. Monica Lucas, what a game she has had. And Cassidy realizing she needs a quick clear here, handing off under a minute remaining in this WCAC tournament final as Paige Graham pushes the ball down the field as quickly as she can. Great check by the Holy Cross defense. Now 38.7 seconds remaining here in regulation. And the officials waiting for everyone to get reset before restarting this contest. And what a contest Holy Cross has played in this final. Now with possession, Shannon Scalese working through defenders. Ball comes loose from her stick. I don't think she even realized that she lost it, but Lucas is gonna be charged with the foul, but Monica Lucas not giving up on the play in the slightest. And now you can see the desperation by good counsel as the writing on the wall here for the Falcons that it is going to be a Holy Cross victory in this contest. As the seconds continue to click off the clock, that will do it. 
The Holy Cross Tartans, your 2012 WCAC Tournament Champions. You see them racing onto the field towards their goalkeeper, Jackie Branthover, who had about as good of a contest as a goalkeeper could have had in this game. The freshman came up huge for the Holy Cross Tartans, but it was really a team effort against Shannon Gallagher with four big goals in this contest, and Monica Lucas with three of her own. Jenna Reese, her excitement, she talked with Leah at halftime, told her how excited she was, and now you can only imagine as, as she runs out onto the field to join her team, how excited Jenna Reese has to be and how proud of this club she must be. Her Holy Cross Tartans will finish their season 15 and five, but they have the biggest goal achieved, which is this WCAC Tournament Championship. Again, they have broken the streak that Good Counsel had coming into this contest, the 90 game winning streak in the WCAC eight straight WCAC tournament championships for good counsel. But tonight the victors are the Holy Cross Tartans as they get ready to receive their trophy at midfield. What a sweet moment. This must be for Jenna Reese and her team coming into this game. They were so poised, disciplined, well coached, and it certainly showed from start to finish. The underdogs clearly but as we heard Jenna Reese say before this contest, and as they certainly demonstrated, they were not intimidated at all coming in tonight's, into tonight's championship final. What an effort by this team. And of course, you have to credit good counsel. A tough day for them today, but what a season Michael Hayes' team had coming into this contest. Undefeated in the regular season in the WCAC and just having a great year. So many phenomenal athletes on that team. Players going on to play at the next level, including players like Caroline Peters, we talked a lot about, and Jennifer Morrissey, who is going to be playing her college lacrosse at Dickinson, and then Meg Graham, the goalkeeper, the Virginia Tech commit. And again, up next, we will have the boys' championship final, Gonzaga versus DeMatha in that one. DeMatha, the underdogs, but if this contest has taught us anything, the underdogs certainly always have a great chance in contests. And tonight, Holy Cross getting it done, defeating good counsel, and now awaiting their trophy presentation. Good Council, of course, was ranked number eight in the Washington Post rankings. Coming into tonight's contest, a very well-respected team. And again, just a huge win here tonight for Holy Cross. As you see their captains and their seniors heading out to the center of the field. Monica Lucas and Shannon Gallagher, two of them, along with, of course, Katie King and other senior leaders on this squad to receive their trophy. And again, such a sweet moment as Jenna Reese also making her way out to center field, deserving so much credit for what her team was able to achieve here today. Coming into this contest with a lot of optimism and a lot of excitement and it showed. They battled on every single play. They did not give up on any play, battling for every ground ball, for every draw control. And they hoisted their trophy. The Holy Cross faithful going wild. Again, such a huge turnout today to support both of these teams, but this Holy Cross cheering section right now, extremely loud as their team gave them a lot to cheer about in tonight's contest. Thank you. A lot of parents here today cheering on 
their athletes extremely proud of what this team able to do as the Gonzaga boys team now entering the stadium as are the DeMatha Stags getting ready for our nightcap of this WCAC tournament. The first game was an exciting one start to finish. It was really Holy Cross that had the momentum right from the early going as Shannon Gallagher scored those two quick goals. And you could tell right then and there that Holy Cross was looking for a much different outcome than what happened here last year in this WCAC tournament final and during the regular season as well. And that is exactly what happened. And now posing for their team picture and a well-deserved opportunity to celebrate for Holy Cross. As you see the excitement. Now bringing the trophy over towards their cheering section. It was really an extra man for them here today. They got so much support from this crowd. <coughs> and now repaying that support that they did receive. The entire team racing over to their cheering section. Frame Leah. Leah. And momentarily we will have an opportunity to talk with Jenna Reese, who is the head coach of this Holy Cross team. Certainly a well-deserved win here for her team. And so many of these players for her team as well. Just such a well-fought battle for Holy Cross. And that will do it for us here today. Again, Holy Cross, your 2012 WCAC Tournament Champions. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time at the Metro Lax Series live streamed at allmetsports.com. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with Gonzaga versus DeMatha coming up next. <laughs>